So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology. We got some terrible news today. Now, I've been reading reports that 2022 was the lowest shipment of smartphones since 2013. Now, with the inflation happening, with consumer confidence shrinking and economic uncertainties, we do see, you know, a reduction in people's interest in buying the latest and greatest smartphones. It, it, no matter how many videos I make, how many videos other tech channels make, you know, it's still showing signs of a cool down. And smartphone makers are having to rethink what they do to bring, you know, something different to the table. And I'm not singling out Google. I'm not singling out Samsung or Apple here any of the big three hitters or any of the major players, including Xiaomi, including OnePlus, nobody in the smartphone game. I'm not single out nobody here. All I'm saying is that it's cooling and this is some terrible news as a techie, as people that love smartphones around here. We're not gonna see anything majorly different if these companies keep playing it safe. So what I wanna talk to you about in this video is why this news, you know, being terrible, why this stuff is happening, I believe. And then we could talk about it down below. I love to hear your opinions, why you are kind of just bored with some smartphones lately, or if you kind of feel like it's been slowing down too, because I think there's a overall feeling amongst, I, I read the comments amongst people. I'm keeping my phone, bro. I don't need that phone. I get these comments all the time. I don't need it. I don't need an upgrade. I'll wait till 2015 or till the iPhone 15. These are people who said that Last year, I'm gonna say it again next year. I'll wait to the 16. I don't need an upgrade. Bro, I just don't need it. So let's begin with the first one. Smartphones are simply maturing to the point where people don't really notice the upgrades that much. And you have to do something pretty different for people to notice. Apple really noticed that. They threw a dynamic island on there. That was different enough to excite users who you know just love to have the latest and greatest, like me, for example. But users who are look a little closer into things, watch what they spend a little bit more, they still look at this and they look at a 13 Pro and they're like, that's the same phone. So it's still not enough. You know, it's, it's not gonna be enough to really excite people. This maturity of these phones, if you take a look at the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and rumors are pointing to a similar looking S23 Ultra to this S22, we'll see what happens at Unpacked, but you know, if it stays the same, then we're looking at another phone that is kind of like, you know, the Note, was it the Note 10 or whatever? Like this, the square design, I mean, they brought it back, but this is not innovative anymore. It's not really groundbreaking. It's innovative to put new cameras, we get it, but cameras aren't the end all be all. Not everybody out there, I mean, mass, mass consumers, massive amounts of consumers are not pro photographers. They're not pro videographers. This is a niche section of the market who really does this, who really cares about it, knows how to use all that stuff. I'm one of those people who love to use the cameras, I and mean, you might be as well, but this is just not gonna pull everybody in. That's why I like what Google Pixel is doing with the camera. They're working on the AI, they know people aren't all pro photographers, so they're just working on making them amazing for just those people who do point and shoot and don't really need to know how to use stuff. That's why I really like the Pixel experience with the camera, it's just, it's more designed for just everyday users who snap a photo and it just does its thing. So I really like that. Now I will say though, that the people are noticing that these phones keep debt in their bank accounts. You know what I'm saying? Like we're noticing, we're noticing y'all giving us some low trading values on phones we just paid a thousand dollars for last year. We're definitely noticing that. But we're also noticing that every time these phones come out, thousand dollars here, 1200 here, 1500 here. That's US. Now, if you're in another country, it could be 2000. It could be even more. Shout outs to everybody letting me know the prices in your country, what it's costing for you. But we do notice that though. But if you want, if you're going to want us to give up that kind of money, we're going to have to see some major changes to the smartphone game for sure. The next thing is that the, you know, the software has been updated for a while. So I just actually got done updating my S22 Ultra. Just got an update yesterday. I got an update for the watch. I got an update for the Galaxy Watch and for my S22 Ultra. So Apple just updated 16.3. They're currently working on the next versions as always. But keep in mind that you're gonna get five, six years of updates for iPhone 14 Pro. The S23 Ultra is not gonna stop the S22 Ultra from getting updated. 
And I'm not saying for them to stop updating. That would be terrible. What I'm saying is that the long-term software support on these phones has reached a point where people are like, great hardware. I'm getting long. Why would I give up my phone? It, it works great. Looks great. Feels great. Has amazing cameras. Has amazing battery life. And the phone is going to be updated for several years. I'm not paying another grand for a phone right now. So yeah, that's another reason I'm seeing. The next one is that people are like saying, look, bro, you know, the supply chain issues are causing highly desirable models to become delayed. And I seen this and you've seen it last year. It was ridiculously hard in the beginning to get a iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max. And I know there's going to be somebody in the comments. It wasn't hard for me. I just went to my carrier and I got one. Yes, you're one person who got it. Not everybody could. You know, I was checking the Apple stores. I was checking the stock at T-Mobile in my area and they were out of stock for weeks you know, at a time. So especially if you want a specific color and a specific storage amount, you couldn't get it. So seeing things like that, this really affected Apple badly because they're one of the biggest sellers of phones. So they, in in the US anyway, they sell a ton. So it was hard to get these. But even I seen some Samsung phones delayed a couple weeks after their initial launches, you'd have to wait two or three weeks to get a phone. So just these delays with the supply chain issues, this also cooled the market in 2022. And, um, you know, these delays just throw off people because people want their phone. They want it now. (laughs) If you don't get it to them now, you don't ship it as fast as possible. They're going to lose desire. They're just going to buy something else or they're going to be like, whatever. I don't need a phone that bad. Like, seriously, I I was excited, but y'all don't even want to. You're going to make me wait four or five weeks. I'll be over that. You know, the new cycle on these phones is so short. You know, you really got to hit it on the head. You got to get this this stuff to people when it comes out, when they're excited, because their interest will wane and it will wane pretty fast. Now, the next thing is that people are just realizing that these phones are simply just tools. If you're into the Google ecosystem, it's a tool for, you know, accessing all your Google stuff. If you use a MacBook or an iPad, the iPhone is just a tool to get you through the day. If you're in the Samsung ecosystem, same thing. These phones are just tools to access your applications and people are realizing more and more as these things just blend into their life every day that they're not as exciting as they once were. Whereas before we didn't have replacements for calculators and notepads and, you know, checking the weather on our phone. We had to watch the news. We had to write stuff down on paper. We had to open. We had to grab an actual calculator. My guy, this was the old days. We had to grab an actual calculator. Yes, I just bring the brought a calculator into the video we used to use these things called pens and highlighters you know highlight i mean some people still do but now we got s pens on our phone we don't need this stuff this stuff was amazing when it first came out it was really making people rethink how they used products in their lives by just kind of replacing those products with smartphones but at the end of the day you know now that it's been around a while people are realizing the strengths and disadvantages of those things sometimes these overwhelm you and you just want to use the old school way anyway but these things have just become tools and they're just not overly exciting to a lot of people anymore they're kind of just blending in with their life kind of like a refrigerator or like a car or like a you know stove or whatever you know just another tool another product another material thing to have sticking around for your everyday world (laughs) you know you, you get what i'm saying and don't be fooled by the massive success massive success of iPhone sales reports. You'll see 14 million sold, the most sold ever. You'll see these headlines, most sold ever iPhone model yet. Apple has its best quarter. They have best quarter because there's always people that need an upgrade. It doesn't mean the general consensus among the market is people are super excited. You know, it's not like it's some brand new thing where it's like so hot that they're lining up around the, around the block. I don't even see people lining up around the block anymore to get a phone. This is not 2007, 2008 anymore. So I don't really see that. It's just not a big deal anymore to a lot of folks, but definitely the initial launches of iPhones are still hot, but they do cool after just a few months. Like right now you can go grab an, uh, any iPhone you want right now. It's pretty much in stock in most places. Um, not everywhere. So don't, don't quote me on that, but definitely in most places. The next one is that manufacturers are just playing it so safe. They don't want to rock the boat too much. 
If you take a look at any of the latest, you know, phones, take a look at their last year models. They're super similar. Yeah, they have a little bit different looks, a little bit different camera lenses, housings, a little bit different specs, but they're not really rocking the boat too much, you know, changing it too much. They're just playing it safe. And when you have the overhead that these companies have, you got a lot of employees to pay. You got to make sure you're keeping those profits raking and we get it. But at the same time, let's rock the boat a little bit. You know, you don't got to go too far, but little spec upgrades every year is not it's going to get old, man. People are starting to recognize that my, my viewers are seeing it, too. Same thing, different year, another phone, another camera. Oh, well, slightly better battery. Big deal. You know, if you make a phone that could last a full week on battery life, watch how fast that thing sells out. If there's a smartphone, I guarantee you, if there's a mainstream smartphone, I don't care if it's Samsung, Apple, Google, whatever. Somebody says we have one week battery life. Watch how fast that thing sells out. Those are things that would really change the game for people because these phones last like one day, you know, every day and stuff like that. So the natural cycle of a new thing has its massive peak and it definitely comes down. And I feel like our massive peak of smartphones is starting to kind of it's stabilized, but it, it's already come down a while ago. So, um, yeah, some will say they're happy with their two year upgrade. Shut up, Nick. You're just clickbaiting here. I'm not clickbaiting. This is something that I was researching this morning, figuring out that we had a very slow market this last year. And I'm a little bit concerned about the future of, you know, the smartphone game. You know what I'm really like, you got to just change things up. So the fold is a really good example of changing things up. It's something different. It feels different to use. You can pull an S pen off, you can enter display. But this isn't for everybody. This is still a niche. But for those people who love their entire, you know, slab style smartphone, we got to see some big changes here that are not just spec upgrades, but more experiential upgrades that really will get people excited to try a new experience on their device. And, you know, I remember a time people said, well, sidekicks are great. Blackberries are great. Everybody loved those phones back in the days. Once the iPhone came out, they didn't know they needed it. It's history. So we need something like that again, where we didn't know we needed it. But yeah, the rest is history. I think Apple did this with their M series chips on the MacBooks and the Mac minis. Having those chips really changed the game for computers. Now everybody's got to play catch up to Apple and Apple's older Intel stuff is just slow now. So those are that's something that didn't really change over our experience, but really changed the speed experience, which makes it like a really desirable upgrade. That's what I'm saying. If you can make a one week battery life phone, something like that would be like great game changing or a chip that allows for that long battery life. If you can't really up the milliamp hours due to constrictions of the size. Anyway, that's it for me. Let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys agree with me? Do you think it's really cooling? Do you think this is terrible news? Or are you just happy with the way smartphones are going? They're so great. And I'm not saying they're bad. They're freaking amazing. Having a phone like the one we have now <laughs> compared to what people had 10, 15 years ago, it's groundbreaking. It's ridiculous how powerful these supercomputers are in your pocket. But I got to tell you, if they don't start changing things up a little bit more, giving us something a little bit more experientially, you know, desirable, <laughs> desirable, it's just it's going to be the same thing every year. It's going to be new phone, new specs, better battery life, better camera. Have a nice day. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.